October 23, 1959 in Downey, California, Alfred Matthew Yankovic is a singer, songwriter, musician, and comedian known for his spot-on parodies of popular songs. Releasing his first single in 1976, Weird Al has since won five Grammys for his songs, albums, and music videos. Known for his accordion skills, Al has garnered the respect of his peers, with most artists considering it an honor for Al to parody their songs. But you already knew that. So here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Weird Al. Number 10. His parents chose the accordion for him. According to Yankovic himself, there was a door-to-door -door salesman that came through his neighborhood when he was a child. The salesman was trying to gain interest in a new music school that was offering music lessons. The salesman was offering the choice between guitar or accordion lessons. Because there was a popular accordion player at the time named Frankie Yankovic, no relation, Al's parents chose the accordion for their son. Eventually, Al would learn to play rock and roll on the instrument, mostly by learning and playing along with Elton John's album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Number 9. He skipped the second grade and graduated early. Al was an exceptionally bright and intelligent kid. He was able to start school early, entering kindergarten a year before other kids his age. He was also able to skip second grade. Because of this, however, some of the other kids in his class would bully him. Al said of the bullying, quote, I got my fair share of verbal abuse, but I learned to run pretty fast, so I didn't get beat up a lot. Eventually, Al would graduate Linwood High School at 16 being named valedictorian of his class. Number 8. He gave himself his famous nickname. While Al was attending California Polytechnic State University, Al got a job as a DJ at the campus's local radio station from midnight to 3 a.m. Al, wanting to stick out from other DJs, and as an homage to his radio hero, Dr. Demento, Al gave himself the nickname Weird Al, sneaking in quote-unquote weird music that was not part of the radio's format. Number 7. One of his first songs was about his family's car. After Al learned the accordion, he began to write and record songs. Al recorded a demo tape and gave it to Dr. Demento when the radio icon came to speak at his high school. One of the first songs that became a hit for Al that Demento played on his show was an ode to Al's family car called Belvedere Cruisin'. Number 6. His first major gig was a disaster. In 1982, Al and his newly formed band played their first major concert as the opening act for the band Missing Persons. For 45 minutes, Al and the rest of his band were pelted with items thrown from the increasingly angry crowd. After the concert, the ridicule continued outside, quote, I was walking to my car in the parking lot, and this 12-year-old boy comes up to me and says, Are you Weird Al? I said yes, and he said, You suck! That was the capper of the evening. Al said from then on, he would never open for another band. And for five years, they stuck to that until 1987, when he got the chance to open for The Monkees. Number 5. He had a very famous fan. During the 80s, Weird Al started to gain a little notoriety with his parody song and video of Michael Jackson's Beat It. Let me know if you'd like me to do a video on him. Jackson loved the parody, and enthusiastically agreed to let him parody his song Bad, even giving Al permission to film his fat music video on the same set Jackson filmed at. Jackson also invited Al to Neverland Ranch to screen his movie UHF. 
Jackson and Al even recorded in the same building several times, with Jackson sending notes to Al to come say hi. Number 4. Nirvana Reignited His Career As I previously mentioned, Al made a name for himself by doing parodies of many of Michael Jackson's songs. In an effort to reach a new audience, Al turned to a new music genre rising in popularity at the time called grunge, and the band that was popularizing it, Nirvana. Al had a friend who was a cast member on SNL, Victoria Jackson. When he saw that Nirvana was the musical guest, Al called Victoria and asked her to contact Kurt Cobain for him, which she did. After getting permission from Cobain, Al recorded Smells Like Nirvana, which became his most popular song up to that point, revitalizing his career and making him a staple of the music industry. Number 3. Don McLean would repeatedly sing Al's parody lyrics. In 1999, with the release of Star Wars Episode I, Al wrote and recorded a parody of Don McLean's song American Pie called The Saga Begins. Reportedly, McLean was such a fan of the song, he would play it constantly. So much so that several times while performing his song on stage, he would accidentally start singing Al's version. Number 2. Paul McCartney turned him down despite being a fan. According to Al himself, the legendary musician came up to him at a party after recognizing him. Paul said he was a fan of Al's music and Al told him that he had an idea to parody Paul's song Live and Let Die with Chicken Pot Pie. Paul said no because he is a devoted vegetarian and didn't want one of his songs used to promote eating animals. Number 1. He doesn't need permission. According to the law, Al does not need to ask the musicians he parodies for permission to use their songs. According to the fair use section of copyright laws, he doesn't need to ask permission as long as the original artist receives proper royalties for the song. However, Al never records a song if he does not get permission from the artists themselves, in order to maintain good relationships within the music industry.